Margaret Lesk on court, I'll be brief because I know we're under time constraint. Uh, Minister, I'd like to ask you about um, the local improvement schemes and the community involvement schemes um, of which in, in areas in particular which were formerly Cork County Council, which now uh, on account of the boundary transition uh, have found themselves within the, the boundary limits of Cork City Council and um, they're no longer eligible for funding and I was wondering could you comment on the matter? Come on, but. My God, uh, and thank you, Deputy, for raising this question. Uh, the Local Improvement Scheme, or LIS, is a programme for improvement works on small private or non public roads in rural areas which are not under the normal maintenance of the local authorities. The scheme is funded by my department and is administered through the local authorities. I launched the 2021 LIS on Friday, the 14th of May last, and I was also pleased to secure a 5% increase in funding for the scheme, bringing the funding available for this year to. 10.5 million. Local authorities in Dublin and the city councils in Cork and Galway have not been eligible for funding under LIS and this is due to the nature of the scheme which provides funding for improvement works on small private or non-public roads in rural areas and is typically linked to access uh, to agricultural land and I have no plans at present to broaden access to the scheme to the city councils. However, I do acknowledge that there were areas of Cork that were previously eligible under the scheme game but are not uh, now eligible as a result of the recent boundary change. If both local authorities um, in the county were agreeable to including these areas affected by the boundary change as part of the scheme for Cork County, it, it is open to them to submit a joint proposal to my department for consideration. I have indicated this previously. Any such proposal would need to be made in the context of the existing allocation provided to the county and without any additional funding requirement from my department. Roads selected for inclusion in the scheme would of course have to meet the criteria of the scheme. So I hope that brings some clarity uh, uh, to, uh, to, the, to the Deputy. Thank you Minister. Deputy O'Sullivan. Thanks, Minister. And I, I know that's the response I got to previous PQs as well. Um, I suppose the difficulty we have is uh, it's very unlikely that in this case Cork County Council are likely to share their own limited budget with Cork City Council. That's just the, the real politique of, of, of local authorities. Um, so I suppose just to, to make the case again, um, these are communities which were in the county, now found themselves in the city despite the boundary extending, you know, nonsensical ways really, 20 kilometres into to rural hinterland. And communities that were lined up for this, these proposals um, in terms of dealing with their area engineers, money in the bank, they had collected their own percentage and now unfortunately they find themselves the wrong side of an arbitrary boundary after doing all that hard work and I suppose they're left in no man's land. So that, that's the reason for the appeal once again and it comes in light of today's report, I'm not sure if you've had time to, to look at it, the All Island Research Observatory uh, at Maynooth found that Cork County roads in particular are massively underfunded in comparison to um, thank you, you know, the national level. So uh, thank you, again, it's just in that Minister context. To uh, thank you, um, uh, Lask and Corla. Just to say, Deputy, the Department's willing to be flexible here. So if the both councils come together, they come to an agreement on how the areas impacted by the boundary change can be covered, uh, we are happy to work with them. And I think that they should do that. Uh, I can't, there's no net increase in the allocation to Cork, but the Department are happy to accommodate a proposal whereby areas affected by the boundary change are included. So they can, they can do with that, they, can, they have that choice now to, to do that. Uh, 10.5 million was announced this month for repairs and improvement works, and uh, Cork will receive an increase uh, this year. Uh, bo uh, in their budget and it, uh, Cork actually has the highest allocation in, in the country and of course it's the biggest county uh, and by the end of the year Cork will have seen investment of some 5.3 million in rural laneways under LIS since yeah. 2017. Thank you. Deputy O'Sullivan. 
Yeah, Gormagos, Les Concordia. Look, I, I, I'm not going to dispute that the figures are up this year for Cork again, but you're right in saying that Cork County has the longest uh, road network in the country. Indeed, if you take any part of, whether it's the northern division in Cork, it's the equivalent population to, to places like Kilkenny County, or if you take West Cork, it's got the largest road infrastructure network in the country. And it's for, it's for that very reason that per capita, per head of population, Cork actually does receive less funding for many of these projects, be it in terms of roads, as I'm speaking about now, CLAR programme funding, again, uh, massively underfunded in terms of Cork County's share of that. Leader funding, Cork is amongst the lowest in the country to receive that. Town and village renewal schemes, again, we have more settlements than any other county in the country. So by the time certain settlements in Cork receive their fair share, um, it's likely to be 11 years estimated in that report that was issued today. So look, Cork is a massive county. I, I think it deserves special consideration. And I'm not just saying that from a parish pump point of view. Thank it's, you. it's the reality on the ground Th that we're headed capital, we don't get our fair share. Thank Deputy you. Deputy Conway-Walsh, you wanted to come in on this? Um, I'm very familiar with LIS schemes, uh, and I can understand uh, both of your, the, the, you know, the issues you have raised regarding funding. And can I just say that, uh, the, just to give you a little bit of history on, on, on the LIS schemes, it, it, it was originally a Department of Transport uh, scheme, and in fairness to my predecessor, Minister Michael Ring, he recognised there was a clear need for this scheme, and he reintroduced it under, uh, the, rural, uh, um, uh, under, under the Rural Department, uh, but the scale of the backlogs in local authorities is far beyond the resources of my department alone, and I have raised the issue of co-funding with Minister Ryan, and in fairness, he didn't rule it out, but his budgets for this year are committed, uh, and I'll continue to raise it with the Minister, and perhaps he might have some unspent monies in other areas that we could divert into the LIS scheme. So I'd say to local authorities, what you have this year, get it spent. And if there's any spare money at the end of the year, I'll certainly uh, do what I can or look at, at thank, the situation you, at that stage. Uh,